Good morning, everyone. Welcome to AM Sports here with me, Muftao Nabila Abdullahi. The Executive Council of the Ghana Football Association had a meeting on Wednesday to discuss some latest developments in Ghana football, especially the performance of the Black Stars in this year's African Cup of Nations qualifying campaign. What Joy Sports has picked up from that meeting is that the Executive Council could not reach a decision on the future of the technical team led by Otto Addo. And we understand that Otto Addo has been invited to his next meeting on Wednesday to present his report and explain to them why he should be allowed to keep, to keep his job as head coach of the Black Stars. Sources have told Joyce Sports that the president of the Ghana Football Association, prior to meeting the executive council, had had a meeting with the head coach Otto Addo and asked him to um, speak to him about some of the challenges he's encountered as head coach of the team. We're also made to understand that the technical team, which is currently uh, being headed by Otto Addo, a chunk of it was put together by the Ghana Football Association, by Otto Addo rather. Apart from the appointment of John Pencil as the assistant coach of Otto Addo, the rest of the technical team was appointed by Otto Addo. Hence, they believe that Otto, who was given the free hand to work with his backroom staff, should be taking responsibility for the failure of the Black Stars to qualify for the African Cup of Nations. In a conversation surrounding whether executive council members should resign from their roles, one of the things we are made to understand is that no one within the executive council is going to resign because they were not appointed to occupy those positions. They were elected. So before any of them would be walking away from the role, they would need to have discussions with the people who elected them to occupy those positions before they tender in their resignation letters. According to sources, again, we're also made to understand that there's going to be the likelihood of the reconstitution of the technical team of the Black Stars after that meeting next week, Wednesday. And guess what? There's a division within the executive council right now. There's that block that says that Otto Addo should be fired with immediate effect. And there's the other block that also argues that Otto Addo should be maintained. Those who say Otto Addo should be fired, these are their reasons. One, in the contract that was handed to Otto Addo, one of the KPIs was that he should qualify the, the team to the African Cup of Nations. And failure to do so uh, meant that he could lose his job. And he has not been able to satisfy that KPI in his contract. But there's also the other group. That other group argues that, as we speak, the severance package due CK Akono, after he was sacked in September 2021, hasn't been paid yet. Also, the severance package due Chris Hutton, after he was fired early this year, hasn't been paid yet. But the monies that were due Milovan Rivach after he was fired in February 2022, that money has been paid. But they say that we cannot continue to sack coaches and pay them huge amount of money as their severance packages since the Ministry of Youth and Sports is reluctant to pay some of these monies. So they say it doesn't make enough financial sense for them to part company with Otoado right now, hence their decision to keep him as the head coach of the team. However, as I mentioned earlier, Otoado has been invited to come to the uh, Executive Council meeting next week, Wednesday, with his report and explain why he should not be sacked as head coach of the team. <clears throat> we'll have details of all this on my Joy Online pretty soon, but uh, let's still stay on issues surrounding Ghana Football Association, and the president of the football governing body, Keto Kriku, on Wednesday presented nine buses to the top three clubs in Zone 1, Zone 2, and Zone 3 in the Ghana uh, Division 1 league. Uh, according to him, this donation that has been handed to the club, they intend to give more to Premier League clubs as well as Women's League clubs. Let's hear from the president. It promises to be a very short ceremony. Our clubs are very much represented here. The buses are ready. Right after this ceremony, you can drive them away. They are your buses. Let me also mention that our clubs participating in the Women's Premier League are also part of this strategy. 
And in the next few days, four clubs from the Women's Premier League will also, four clubs from the Women's Premier League will also take home one of each of, of these buses. On that note, I very much want to thank my ESCO, who are represented here, for the belief and for the trust in the vision. We have said that it's important for us to fix the fundamentals. One of the fundamental needs of our clubs is transport. We have also said that it's important for us to create wealth and to share wealth. And if you remember, I did say in Kumasi that through our collective performances at that time, our inflows had increased and we're going to give part of our inflows to our clubs. This is a living testimony of that promise. So as we go along the journey of fixing the fundamentals, we will also create wealth and we also share the wealth for all of us. Today, it is the turn of our Division One clubs. Tomorrow, it may be the turn of our Women Premier League clubs. A day after tomorrow, it may be regional football and next, and then the next, and then the next. Again, on behalf of the Executive Committee, I want to thank you very much for the support. On behalf of our clubs, thank you very much for being patient because Kumasi and today has been a long journey. But you've been patient, you've been positive, you've believed in the vision, and today it is real. Well, the buses have been presented to the clubs, but one of the buses, according to the recipient, New DBRC, they say that the bus is not good enough. Let's take a look at the interior of that bus as its seats are torn as though it is a 1948 bus. This is according to Mickey Charles, who took the video after touring the bus. Hey, Tanda. Now, me didn't throw some money at the bay. I did the whole year, no, I and I have a camera. Also, Martin's buses. Yeah, you know, I can't ever get a bus. Now, why would this our bus we a Martin? Sir, what could you a bus or port at the Maclausa? Okay, bus and refuse, refuse in an attitude at an amhol. What I got to you, Tacra, and boy, as I who die. Yeah, Monim de Guasin. Monim of Guasin. I've been as well video. Monim de Guasin. <laughs> well, these are the new buses presented to the class. And in fact, Joy Sports can report that some clubs say that they will demand the immediate resignation of the president of the Ghana Football Association, Kurt Okweku, from office and also his entire executive council for what they describe as scam. Uh, what uh, we've picked up is that these, bus, these are not actually the buses that GFA procured. However, the football governing body was unable to clear those buses from the port. Hence, they engaged a private company to clear the buses. That private company that cleared the buses decided to exchange those buses with these ones. These are what some of the clubs are saying. Joy Sports cannot independently verify these claims. However, as and when we do have details of these claims, we're putting them out in our subsequent bulletins. But these are the claims of the clubs as they say that they've been presented second-hand buses by the leadership of the Ghana Football Association. And in fact, in that exact uh, congress that was held in Kumasi somewhere last year, the GFA president had promised them new buses. So they are wondering why they will be given second-hand buses. So that is clearly uh, what uh, is happening right now in relation to uh, the Ghana Football Association. And Ghana midfielder Abdul Fattah Isaku, he suffered an injury in Ghana's Afghan qualifier against Angola in Luanda last week, Friday. Now he's undergone surgery and he has shared pictures of himself after successfully going through the injury. Let's take a look at the picture after Fattah Isaku posted it on his social media pages 
on Wednesday afternoon, yeah, indicating to the world that, yes, he, uh, he went through an injury. And in fact, we're also made to understand that about 13 players out of the 25 players that were called up by Otoado suffered the injuries. Let's take a look at the picture um, on, on your screens right now. As, uh, yes, so that's a picture there of Abdul Fatah Isaaku, uh, who underwent the surgery. And this is what he wrote that he said that uh, his surgery was successful. And I just want to tell you that I am okay and I'm feeling good after the surgery. I want to thank everyone for your best wishes. So Abdul Fatah Isaaku there, um, he posted this on Instagram uh, yesterday. Alhamdulillah, uh, all glory to the almighty Allah, uh, my surgery was successful. That is Abdul Fatal Isaku. Ghana Athletics, they have been nominated by World Athletics as the Athletics Federation of the Year. The athletics governing body in the country in the last 10 years, according to World Athletics, have positioned themselves as one of the best run federations in the world. Hence, their nomination uh, to be awarded as Athletics Federation of the Year. Ghana set a national record of 38.07 seconds in the last World Athletics Championships, which took place in Oregon. And the athletics governing body also over the years has been able to produce athletes who have clocked sub-10 in, in their events. Notably, um, Benjamin Azamati, who was able to do 9.90 seconds about three years ago, prior to the World Athletics Championships, and uh, Darcy, James Darcy, he held the world time of 19.79 seconds in the 200 meters prior to the World Championships in Budapest last year. Um, Ghana Athletics have been able to get this recognition because of the kind of athletes they've been able to churn out in the last few years, hence their nomination as World Athletics Federation of the Year. Zakiri Ichoriche. Zakiri, can he convert his bronze? That is your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. And as I mentioned, we'll be giving a chronology of what transpired at the Ghana Football Association Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. And also, just briefly, something is brewing at the National Sports Authority. Apparently, many people had thought that the decision of the president to sack Professor Peter Chumesi was going to curb the rot that was happening at the authority. Unfortunately, that is a turnaround. The e-ticketing company that was engaged to um, sell tickets and send the money to the National Sports Authority. Apparently, we're not doing so. To the extent that they owe the authority up to about one million Ghana cities. Hence, the gentleman was arrested and they've been given a payment plan. That money was paid in three tranches. Guess what has become of the money? It has disappeared from the accounts of the National Sports Authority. Joy Sports will share in details in our subsequent bulletins.